Amen, amen. I want to look at Psalms 33. Amen. This judgment of never hearing the word of God is dreadful. Psalms 33 and 6 to the ninth verse. I think I just want to magnify the sixth verse. Psalms 33, word of God reads, By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made, and all the hosts of them by the breath of his mouth. Amen. He commanded and it was so. You don't want to hear this almighty word, this all-powerful word that set everything in order. By, by the word of the Lord, the heavens were made. Amen. And the host of them, all the galaxies and the stars, everything was made by God's word. And you can't hear it. What a dreadful famine that has come upon you. Amen. Hebrews 11.3 magnifies that. We just want to magnify the word. What you missing? Hebrews 11.3, the word of God reads, Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. That's what framed everything. It's built on everything. Amen. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Amen. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. He didn't use nothing that we see. It was on his word, and you can't hear it. Amen. And he would establish you, but you can't hear it. Amen. Amen. Pray that God would unstop your ears. Amen. Psalms 119. Psalms 119. I just want to magnify what you're missing. How the blindness have come upon you. Deafness has come upon you. Amen. Amen. Psalms 119, 162. I think that's the longest, the largest verse in the Bible, Psalm 119. I think it's the middle of the Bible as well. Psalms 119 and 162. The word of God reads, I rejoice at thy word as one that findeth great spoils. I rejoice at your word as a treasure. Your word is a treasure. Amen. It's a lamp for my feet and it's a light for my path. I won't be blind. I won't be deaf. Amen. I, I treasured it. Amen. It is life. It gives me life. It shows me the path of life. Amen. And you can't hear it. The ones that the famine has come upon, they cannot hear it. Amen. Turn with me to Job, Job 23, 12. I'm just pointing out what we're missing. A short verse, a short synopsis here of this devastating famine. Amen, amen. And it, it has come. The time has come. He said, behold, the days come. It has come, said the Lord, that I will send this famine upon the land. Amen. In Job 23, 12, I, I just love this. I wanted to include it. Job 23, 12, Job says, Neither have I gone back from the commandments of his lips. I didn't turn back. I didn't backslide. He says, I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. I'd rather hear him and abide by him than to eat. It's more important than food. Food only is for the physical man. This word is for your spiritual man. Amen, amen, that you will live forever. Amen. He said, Moses didn't give you the bread from heaven. Jesus said, I'm the bread that came down from heaven. The ones that when they ate the bread of Moses, they still had to die. But if they eat this bread, they'll never die. Job said, I esteem your word, Lord, your precepts, the way I study your Bible. It's a treasure. I'd rather count the pages than count my money. I'd rather esteem your word than eat. Amen, amen. And the ones who the famine has hit, they cannot, they cannot hear it. They cannot hear it. Lights out. It's just a matter of time 
Amen, amen, amen. And you'll be gone into eternity. Amen, amen. 2 Timothy 2.1, 2 Timothy 2.1. Second Timothy, the second chapter, first through the second verse. The word of God reads, Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus, and the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses. The same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Amen. The things that you have heard. Amen. Somebody passed it down to you. They didn't let it slip. Amen. Now it came down to you. Amen. Now it's up to each and every one of us, not just the ministers, each and every one of us that have heard God's word. It's up to us to pass that on down to other men and those other men to pass it on down to others also, or else there will be a famine. Amen. First Peter 4.10, I believe it says that as each one of us have received grace, minister the same one to another, the manifold grace of God. Amen. Don't leave here with the grace God have given you. He gave it to you to pass on down to somebody else. If not, there's going to be a famine. It's going to be a famine of the word of God. Amen. All of us have an awesome responsibility. Amen. Most Christians are in a comfort zone, not even realizing the treasure and the food that they have been given. Amen. They have forgot their maker. Amen. And it's your job to pass that on down to others who are able to teach others also. Amen. Don't be ashamed of the gospel. Amen. It's a solemn charge. That's actually a charge to each and every one of us. Amen. The things you've heard and received, you heard it. You heard the word. Amen. And you received it. It's your job to pass it on to other men who are able to committed to other men who are able to teach others also. Amen, amen. And so a lot of times we look at that just for the minister only. That's to each and every one of us. Amen. If you hear, O Israel, you heard it. Amen. It's your job to pass it on. All of us got a gift. We're going to be teaching on the gifts real soon. It ain't that many gifts. It's not that many. The Bible categorizes them. It's only so many. You got one of those. I want to teach, help us teach those, and that's what God is expecting you to pass on, to teach others also. Amen. The grace, the manifold grace, amen, that you receive from the Lord Jesus Christ. Search your heart about what you have heard. Amen. The In our world today, in America today, what's really important is that somebody, some of our leaders will hear the word of God. I think that's the most critical issue, and you never will hear it in the campaigns. They'll say all kind of other things. What's the number one issue facing America? They'll say this, they'll say that, they'll say this, they'll say that. No, the number one issue is hearing the word of God. Amen. Because God has established this. God rules in the kingdoms of men. We've only been in existence about 200 and something years, and already we're starting to forget our maker. Who, who brought us here? Amen. Who helped us cross the Red Sea? We had our own Red Sea that we crossed. Not only that, as individuals, you're forgetting your maker. Amen. You, you become, he's become bored, bordersome to you, laborers to you. Amen. Have to pray, have to study your Bible, have to commit scripture to memory, to have to live it out. Amen, 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 amen. The day is coming when it's going to be lights out. It's going to be all over for you, and you will die in your sins because you're indifferent toward God, you're unjust, and you have another idol. You made something else the idol instead of this precious word of God. Amen, amen. He said, if any man thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Amen. He'll provide thirst. He'll provide food. Amen, amen. It, to see this charge, it's in 1 Timothy 1.18, the one I just read in 2 Timothy. 1 Timothy 1.18, it's on our lesson outline. It said, this charge I commit unto you, son Timothy, according to the prophecies which went before on thee, that thou by them mightest war a good warfare, holding faith and a good conscience. 
which some having put away concerning faith, have made shipwreck. He even named two of them, of whom is Hymenaeus and Alexander, whom I have delivered unto Satan, that they may learn not to blaspheme. This is a charge to each and every one of us. The things you have heard. Amen. The things you have heard. Amen. They're going to start just taking the Bible out of sight even more so because there's a famine of hearing the word of God. They replace any kind of little language and stuff to make it user friendly. No, we don't need to bring God down to us. We need to go up to where he's at. Amen. Amen. But all of us have a little piece of the Bible. All of us have that little responsibility of what we have heard. Amen. And if you could just imagine with me what's going to happen to the young virgins and the young men that don't have the word. What kind of world is that going to be? Lord, come, Lord Jesus, come, come. The spirit and the bride say, come. We hasten your coming. Put everything in order. It's all out of order. Amen. But it's a charge. Hold faith in a good conscience. Amen. And the, and the things that have went, that you have heard. Amen. That's, you heard it from God. Amen. Jesus said, flesh and blood had not revealed that to you, Peter, but my Father, which is in heaven. Amen, amen. A solemn charge to pastors and to all of us, deacons, trustees, lay leaders, whoever you are, single sister, married sister, pass that on to the other married sisters. Single sisters, pass it on to the younger single sisters, how you made it and the things you heard from God. Amen, amen, amen. Because a famine is coming where people are not going to be able to hear and what kind of world is that going to be? Amen, amen. St. Mark 14, St. Mark 14. I got another point I want to make concerning Israel, America, and to each one of us as an individual. How much do you study? How much do you pray? Has God become boresome to you? Do you come to church and take a nap? Amen. Do you prepare to come into his presence? Do you got a testimony for his program or a song or something to show him gratitude? Or has he become burdensome to you? Amen. If you're in that situation, amen, you're starting to go into this famine. Amen. Amen. And if you do, it's going to be lights out for you. It's all over. They're going to say, what a shame that was. What a shame, the late great America. Y'all remember America? Do y'all remember Rome? Amen. It's a shame. They became indifferent, injustice, and idolatrous. And the same thing will happen to you and to I. Amen. St. Mark 14, 62. And Jesus said, I am. Well, 61. He's at his trial. And it says, and so what I want to magnify here, Jesus is called the word made flesh. We beheld his glory as of the only glory of the begotten of the Father, full of grace and full of truth. Amen. He is the word. What did the world, the Jewish nation first, and America, and you and I, what we going to do with the word made flesh? What you going to do with Jesus? You're going to have to do something with him. You're going to have to do something with him. You're going to have to accept him or reject him. Amen, amen. And we see here, we in St. Mark 14, start at 61. But he held his peace and answered nothing. Again, the high priest asked him and said unto him, Art thou the Christ, the son of the blessed? And he said, I am. I am that I am. The all-sufficient one. Amen. Self-sustaining one self-existing, eternal one, I am. And ye shall see the Son of Man setting on the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest rent his clothes. Amen. I even read where the high priest wasn't supposed to rent his clothes. You're not supposed to rent your garment. He rent his clothes and said, What need we of any further weakness? Ye have heard the blasphemy. What think ye? And they all condemned him to be guilty of death. Kill the word. The word made flesh. In the beginning was the word and the word was God and the word was with God. And he's come down here and, the, and they killed him. Amen. They killed him. There was a famine. They couldn't hear. 
Time has come upon them. It's lights out for them. If you miss Jesus, you missed it all. The true Jesus. Amen, amen. Then I, I found it interesting in Acts 7. We're in Acts 7. Seventh chapter and the fifty seventh verse, Acts seven fifty seven. This is concerning Stevenson. Stephen, amen, the first martyr, amen. And I don't know if we fully understand uh, this great uh, message that Stephen had, amen. He wasn't condemning them. He wasn't speaking out of turn, amen. What he really was saying was that they always missed it the first time, but they're going to get it the second time. He never had a chance to finish Amen. When Abraham was called, he didn't go at first, but he got it the second time. Throughout Israel history, they didn't get it right the first time, but they're going to get it right the second time. So he's saying you're stiff-necked and uncircumcised and hard. You always do resist. But he's, he's, he wanted to finish, but they didn't give him a chance to finish. You know what they did? They stopped their ears. You don't want to hear it. Are you stopping your ears to the word of God? Then the famine has come upon you. America, are you stopping your ears from the word of God? Then the famine has come upon you. Men, women, boys and girls, if you're stopping your ears to the word of God, then the famine has already come upon you. And it's just a matter of time. It's going to be lights out. There's no more for you. Forever and ever and ever. Amen, amen. We'll read it here. It says Acts 7.57. And they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and ran up on him with one accord. Amen. And they cast him out and stoned him. We don't want to hear that. We don't want to hear that. Tell us something jokes. Tell us something funny. Put some philosophy with it. Amen. All those things are well and good, but it don't take the place of the word of God. Amen. Ain't nothing more joyful than the word of God. Amen. I described it to you. It's better than food. Amen. It's better than any high you could ever be on. It's better than any sexual experience you could ever get in the world if you get the real thing. There's a lot of false ones out here, but if you get the real thing, it's better. Amen. Amen. They killed the word and they stopped their ears. 1 Timothy 4.1. 1 Timothy 4.1. Paul was doing a lot of instructing to Timothy. The, the letters to... Uh, his, the ones he was training that was coming up under him. Amen, amen. It's, uh, it's to, to the pastors, pastoral epistles. Amen. And Paul is teaching Timothy here. And if we're looking at 1 Timothy 4.1, it says, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times, the lesson said, Behold, the days come. In the latter times, some shall depart from the faith. Amen giving heed what they heard to seducing spirits. Amen. It's not talking sexually. That's not the only way to be seducing. Somebody can seduce you away from the truth. That's even worse. Have you believed in a lie instead of the truth? Seducing spirit and doctrine of devils. You would think doctrine of devils would be at the university of Satan. But no, it's in the church. Churches have got off. It's a famine they not stand with the word. Amen. They're the blind leading the blind. And they both going to fall into the ditch. Amen. Amen. So Paul was teaching Timothy in the latter times, and I believe it's because of this famine. They're going to depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrine of devils. Amen. Amen. That's the main point I wanted to get to. Amen. In the latter times, they're going to depart from the They're going to leave the real faith. Amen. They get tired of it. It's burdensome. It's outdated. Amen. No, heaven ain't never outdated. Actually, it's future. Amen. Amen. Then we look at 2 Timothy 3.1. Paul again in the pastoral epistles. He's teaching Timothy. This Holy Ghost was telling him. Now, Timothy, you watch it. They're going to leave the real faith. Amen. Because iniquity shall abound. The love of many going to wax cold. A whole lot of people going to leave the real word. 
Amen. That's the famine coming up on them, Timothy. 